Hello everyone and welcome to John and Catherine's 2.6 challenge to raise money for the Marine Conservation Society where we're going to try and talk about 26 different sea creatures in 26 minutes. So John's got a random sea creature generator, generator. Yep. Uh, using perchance.org um, and I'm just going to hit randomise and it's going to give us a, a creature and Catherine's then going to try and speak about that creature for the allotted time up to a minute per creature. So we get through to 26, hopefully. We'll see how we do. Yep. I am not a marine biologist at all, so I'll be sharing kind of memories and any information that I know. And it'd be lovely to hear from any of you, from any of the sea creatures that we talk about, any facts or memories that you have with them. I've got my trusty Sheila the shark here to help me as well. So that is us at three o'clock. Should we go for it? What's our first yeah. random sea creature? Uh, so the first sea creature is a manatee. Oh, the manatee. Well, it's quite funny. The first thing that comes to mind is my plastic-free manatee tea holder that you got me for <laughs> my birthday last year. But I also know that I think they're referred to as the sea cow. And I think that's because they eat lots of sea grass. So just like cows on land who eat all the grass in the fields, our manatees also eat sea grass underneath the water. And they're pretty big creatures, actually. Mm -hmm. um, Shall I have a look and as see? Well? You? Yeah, have you got any favourite facts about our, our manatees? I'm pretty sure you find them in Florida. And I think they they do kind of come do they come upstream as well i think sometimes into fresh water oh I like that we've got 14 fun facts about manatees this sounds good typically found in shallow coastal areas and rivers yeah that sounds so they do come up into the rivers as well uh, manatees go to the surface of the water every three to five minutes to breathe although they can remain underwater longer holding their breath for up to 20 minutes that's right, because they are a mammal, aren't they? They're like us. They've got lungs and they need to breathe, so they need to go up to the surface to breathe. Right, okay. that's us at two minutes past three. So what's our next random sea creature? John Dory, oh. a, a coastal fish with an eye-like black mark on each side and long, spiny dorsal fins. That's very appropriate, isn't it, John? Yeah. Generating a John Dory. Yep. Yeah. So I remember seeing a John Dory when I was diving off um, Gozo, so the island next to Malta, and we were actually diving what was known as the Blue Hole, um, which was an incredible dive, and the John Dory was just beautiful. I, I would imagine that that kind of eye pattern on the side of its body, which is really big, is meant to scare off potential predators because it maybe makes them think it's a much larger creature than the John Dory itself. It also just makes me think of Dory from Finding Nemo, one of my favourite fish, my favourite forgetful fish, being our little Dory fish. So they're quite spectacular, aren't they, with their big spines on their back as well. You got a fact that you've managed to find. So that's, a picture. That's what a, a John Dory looks like. Had you heard of a John Dory before that? I had not. No. Ah, there you go. So you've got a new fish. Um... I don't know if this one has many facts, actually, or easily read facts. Well, that's okay. That's us at three minutes past cool. three, so well, I think we're ready for our next sea creature. Let's generate the new one then and see what, uh, see what we have next. A dragonet. Ooh, what's a, that? A showy tropical fish of the Indian and Pacific Oceans with dragon-like eyes and fins. Oh, you're going to have to find a let, picture let's, 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 for that. Uh, a dragonet. So a tropical fish, was it? Tropical sea fish. So obviously living yep. in warm waters, so we probably won't be having that in the sea around Scotland. And I wonder if they maybe, do they live on the coral oh, wow. reefs? Oh, wow, they look beautiful. Look how colourful they are. I like that, a dragonette. Cool. And do you think they are so colourful because they do live amongst the coral reefs, which are very colourful as well. So in a way, they can actually camouflage. They don't have scales. No scales? Nope. So what is it instead? Is it just a skin? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I assume so. A scaleless fish. Mm. Well, that's really interesting. Um, hmm. if they also have a toxic mucus coating. Oh, so that'll be why they're so brightly coloured as well, isn't yep. there? 
for toxic. Um, it's warding off predators. other creatures that they're toxic. So you don't want to you don't want to lick a dragonette then. Nope. Not that you'd encourage licking any sea creature, but definitely not a dragonette. Okay, let's move on to our next. Leafy sea dragon. Oh, I love these. You have to have a look up a picture of these. So they, um, I don't know if it's they're the same family as seahorses, um, but they look very similar to seahorses. But the leafy sea dragon basically looks like a bit of floating seaweed, uh, which is amazing. So their camouflage is incredible. Um, just because that's the kind of habitat they hang out in is with all the weeds and the different kind of grasses. So I think John's got a photo there. Look at that. I mean, to be honest. It is very, very good camouflage. If you didn't know that was a sea creature just at glancing, you probably would have just thought that was seaweed, wouldn't you? Yeah. I'm pretty sure there was an amazing part in Blue Planet 2 with the sea dragons um, in it as well, the leafy sea dragons. But I think you get lots, a bit like seahorses, you get different types of sea dragon. Can only be found in the coastal waters of southern Australia. Oh, wow. Down to 82 feet deep. So they still stay fairly shallow and then. They're actually related to uh, seahorses. So they are in like some sort of related mm-hmm. family. Um, of course, a... I don't know how um, how true a lot of these facts are. We're just we'll have to ask so some of my colleagues to, maybe to check to that they are actually uh... do some fact checking for us. But this is good fun. Okay. Right, gosh, that's a six minutes past already. Or fish, an or fish. Well, that rings a bell, but I can't bring anything to mind. A long, slender, seldom seen fish. 20-foot specimens occasionally wash up on beaches. Oh, my goodness. I feel like this website's maybe (laughs) quite, uh, like, it's not, um, you know, it's given us quite a range of international fish that we don't necessarily uh, know about, which is quite interesting. Yeah, no, I like it. So what's an oar fish, then? If we looked up... I'm going to imagine that it either looks like an oar or has fins that look like oh, oars. Oh, wow. It's but a very 20 long foot long, fish, yeah. really, really big. Um, most, of the, most of the photos have people next to them for, like, size. Oh, for a bit of scale. For scale. Oh, but, um, wow. There's one with a diver in the background. That's amazing. It's got a lovely, like, orange fin that runs the whole length of its body as well. Wow. Oh, there we go. I don't think I'd ever heard of an oar fish, so I like that. I think, I don't know if um, that's a song to our next one. It is, yeah, that's seven minutes past. Um, Tun shell, a tropical sea snail with a rounded shell said to resemble a tun or wine cask. Oh, that sounds like my kind of sea snail, especially on a Sunday afternoon. So I think as with so many of our creatures, there's just so many different species. So you say something like a sea snail, and there's actually probably hundreds, maybe even thousands of different types of them. But this is what a ton sea snail looks like. Got some lovely ridges. I feel like we've seen um, one similar to that. Yes, they almost remind me a little bit of, it's almost like a rigid dog whelk, which yes. is what we'd get here, which are like the big sea snails that you would get around the, the UK. Um, but we also get loads of the smaller sea snails, so things like periwinkles and painted top shells and so many really beautiful ones. And you've probably found the shells when you're on the beach going along rock pooling too. A jellyfish. Hey, hey, we know about our jellyfish. So not any particular kind of jellyfish, just, nope, just jellyfish. jellyfish. I love it. Well, I love talking about jellyfish because I feel like everybody's got a jellyfish story. So mm. if you were to choose a jellyfish story, what would your jellyfish story be? you got a memory of a jellyfish. Yeah, I like the um, lion's mane's jellyfish that we 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 saw them, like a really big one actually, a few years ago on a beach in... Is it when we were on Beat? Beat, that's right, that's right. We did lots of um, taking pictures to report to MCS then for a jellyfish, because I, yep. I remember walking yep. along, I think it's Ettrick Bay, that's right, on yep. the Isle of Butte, and there was loads of them washed up. So when they were washed up, they were about the size of dinner plates. They're quite dark red, burgundy colour, but they can grow to be absolutely massive. So that top part of the jellyfish is called the bell. And I think on the lion's mane, the bell can grow up to over two metres mm. wide. So these are some big jellyfish. I'm um, not excited there, so I'm going for our next we're, one. We need to, need to keep it to a minute. We didn't put a timer on, we've just been guessing. Well, we'll go, in, well, we're on nine minutes past three, so we must have gone, we gone through now? I'm not Hopefully. sure if we did. Uh, <laughs> zooplankton is the next one. So we're going down to the really, really little ones. What's the description of zooplankton? It says, there? the huge variety of tiny animals, eggs and larvae that drift in oceans. 
So you is, hear yeah. plankton a lot. And I think there are quite a few different, again, types of plankton, zooplankton um, being all the living animal kind of creatures. And then mm-hmm. there's phytoplankton, which are more like plant based ones. But you get to think about two or three other types of plankton. And they're really important. They make up like kind of usually the first part of the food chain for a lot of sea creatures. What I think is amazing is the size of some of the animals that then eat the plankton. Yeah. So we've got our creatures like the basking shark, second largest fish in the sea, comes to the UK to gobble up these teeny tiny little little plankton. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, we like plankton. They're very important. Manta ray. Oh, wow. I would love to see a manta ray. I've never seen Mm -hmm. a manta ray. But obviously they're, again, part of a massive family of rays with everything from our stingrays to our thornback rays that you get here. Um, And I believe they're all part of the shark family. So probably Mm. one of Sheila's cousins. Yeah. But I think the manta rays are one of the biggest rays, I think. And I think there was an amazing sequence of one of the documentaries where they filmed underwater in the dark for either manta rays or another type of ray um, when they were all kind of coming together to mate, I think. So absolutely incredible creatures. Have you ever seen a manta ray anywhere or? Not that I can think of, no. No, no, beautiful creatures. Just watching them kind of fly Mm -hmm. through the ocean is amazing. Uh, Olive sea snake. Ooh. A highly venomous swimming snake of Indo-Pacific coral reefs. Oh, wow. So I think I still remember learning that you got snakes underwater. I had mm. no idea. I, I guess mean, you often associate them with like like grass and deserts and stuff, don't you? Definitely, yeah, or at least just on land. Mm. But actually their bodies are really good for like for swimming. Yeah. Um, and I think there is... So I think the olive one, I think a lot of them are actually um, quite poisonous, aren't they? Yeah. Um, so they usually are quite brightly, brightly coloured, but definitely have a look up on YouTube and see them like swimming through the water. It's amazing to watch, <laughs> just as if they were like kind of moving and slithering on land, except it's just through the water column and it looks spectacular. Nudie Branks. <laughs> yay! Sea slugs! <laughs> <laughs> so nudibranchs yeah, are more commonly known as sea slugs and we get so many different kinds we get so many of them here in Scotland and in the UK and they're actually loads of different incredible colours but most of them are like really really tiny so I remember being shown them for the first time over on the Isle of Mull um, with Matt one of our sea champion coordinators and he had like his macro camera all set up and yeah. I remember him letting me use his camera to take a little video of one <laughs> and it was brilliant but literally you have to just have your head in a rock pool with this kind of zoomed in on this tiny little creature yeah as it's going as it's going along but have you seen you must seen quite a lot of photos and stuff yeah I've seen, yeah I've seen, seen a lot of pictures and, and stuff yeah like that. have you seen the one that looks like a sheep looks like Sean the sheep no oh I have actually after this look up sea slug that looks like Sean the sheep and it is so cute I will I will do that (laughs) (laughs) oh we're on 13 prawn oh just prawns in general Mm -hmm. name for the larger kind of shrimp ah and I I think everyone knows well I would imagine most people know what a prawn is you would think yeah I don't know if a lot of people maybe know what some of our prawns again you get different species and look like when they're rock pooling because I didn't realise our prawns don't turn pink until after they're cooked, apparently. Oh, I did not know that. Um, that's, that's, a good, that's a good fact. Yeah. What um, colour are they then? Before so they... I think they're almost translucent. Wow. Um, okay. And I think I'm thinking of like the tiny little shrimp, I imagine, are part of the prawn family that you find in rock pools. And some of them have got like little black stripes, but they're really, really translucent. Yeah. They usually have like really long antenna as well for like finding out some food and mm-hmm. then they filter it into their filter it into mm. their mouths as well but if you like to eat prawns make sure you use the good fish guide to making sure you're using sustainable prawns um as well and at the moment i know that there's lots of amazing fishers who are selling their catch locally so make sure to get some um nice and sustainable and support local fishers and business as well and tiger shark oh going on to shark territory now <laughs> sheila's happy so I believe tiger sharks are quite spectacular because they're called tiger sharks because do they not have like really faint stripes 
mm-hmm. on dark, their body. Yeah, dark stripes. Yeah, so just like the tiger on land. Mm-hmm. Um, I think tiger sharks have got, sadly, quite a bad reputation yeah. um, as being one of the more aggressive species. But I think it's the same message with all sharks. Like, poor Sheila is very upset that people get scared of sharks. I think one of my favourite facts that I learned was you are more likely to get killed by a toy shark than a real shark. So at the moment, you're in more danger being oh. killed by Sheila than ever getting killed by a shark <laughs> if you're swimming. <laughs> okay. Well, that's, that's some interesting... So there you go. Yeah. And Sheila's not dangerous at all. Oh, we've got some we've got some more nice creatures. That oh, we what's our next like. one? Uh, sea otter. Oh, do you want to talk about sea otters first? Sea otters are quite close to us, aren't they? Um, so we went on a trip to Canada last year and we adopted one of the sea otters um, that uh, live out there, don't, didn't we? Yeah. Um, so it's when we were in Vancouver and we went to visit the aquarium and they've got a sea otter rescue centre. And yeah. um, so we adopted one of the otters um, called Rialto, yeah. Rialto the otter. Mm-hmm. Um, but we've always loved sea otters. They yes. are just so charismatic. And I remember when it was before we met, actually, I went on a trip to um, California with my family and we saw the sea otters at Monterey Bay and my mum and dad were very lucky they got to see a little baby one getting all cleaned Mm -hmm. by its mum while mum was floating on her back so yeah definitely a big fan of our sea otters and of course we get them here in Scotland as well absolutely gorgeous. Uh, So next we have oyster. Oh it's a very famous seashell isn't it our oysters. So I think oysters are most famous for if a little bit of sand gets in, they then, um, I think, they then mix it up with pretty much their spit until it becomes a lovely pearl. pearl. Um, But they're also very famously known for being good to eat. I think I have to admit, I don't think I've ever tried an Mm. oyster. And I can't see you probably giving Mm, a a raw oyster a go. I don't think I would, in all honesty. (laughs) Um, but really excitingly, um, MCS is working with Harriet Watt University and Glen Morangie Whiskey Distillery to reintroduce um, oysters to the Dorna Firth up in the north of Scotland. So which is really exciting because Scotland used to have a lot of native oyster beds, which were sadly fished out. So it's really nice to see these kind of projects to start getting these creatures back in again. Grouper. Oh, a grouper. So that's that's definitely a type of fish. Mm hmm. It makes me think of uh, of work because our big staff meetings are called um, groupers when we all group mm-hmm. together. So I'd imagine our grouper likes to show together. Mm-hmm. Is there a fact about our grouper? Uh, there is, actually. Um, it says many can change sex from female to male. How interesting. So many fish can actually do this. Mm-hmm. I think quite a famous one is clownfish because mm-hmm. I think that's the funny thing about Finding Nemo is technically Nemo's dad would probably have had a sex change to become a female um, to then be able to have more eggs as part of like the the clownfish colony, but grouper obviously can do the same. When if they're either running out of females, then they can obviously change their sex to make sure that there's always females to impregnate and lay eggs, which is pretty weird but pretty wonderful. Um, lobster. Oh, lobsters! So I think lobsters are incredibly underrated creatures. I think they can live for incredibly get, long yeah, time. Yeah, pretty old, don't they? Yeah. Well, I think I, I'm sure I heard somewhere that let's let's have a wee look. I'm sure it must some tell us somewhere that where they think they're pretty much immortal, and um, like they never, they would never die of old age. They would die of like disease or if obviously they were fished. Um, so I think they're like subject to quite a lot of research as well. But of course you get so many different kinds of lobsters. So lobster I've seen most are the little squat lobsters that live in all the little crevices in sea walls when I used to go diving with the Aberdeen Sub Aqua Club. And you'd always just see their kind of claws sticking out ready to go. But you obviously get so many other ones like the beautiful big spiny lobsters um as well. If you find any of them they come in different colours as well because they they not find There was a blue one that I think got called Pepsi. There was an orange one called Tango as well that I'm sure I heard. So when fishers are bringing up lobster and they find ones that's like a really different colour, they'll actually let people know about it. So it says here that, um, yeah, lobsters uh, can have extraordinarily long lifespans, uh, living 100 years or... Wow. 
you know, and depending on like, and I think that is um, also linked to their size as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, as you say, typically it's the, the reasons for death are actually not age. There are other things like disease or getting caught and or getting an injured baby from a fight or, or something things like that. that. There Just you go. Cool. Who knew how awesome our lobsters were? Let's see. I think we've um, got six left. Got six minutes left. Nautilus. Oh, the Nautilus. Is this not a really, really old sea creature? So it is, it's got a shell with a spiral, but then it's almost yep. got little tentacles that come out and it mm-hmm. uses little jet propels to go I'm, through the water. I'm quite impressed because you've pretty much exactly... Uh, mirrored what it says on the description Read that what it says it says a primitive mollusk of the tropical pacific with a spiral shell and tentacles there we go i'm so getting better that, that was on. almost word well like <laughs> pretty much yeah wow. that's amazing because i think so many of our sea creatures have been around for so long like our sharks have been around for millions of years and there's creatures like the nautilus and mollusks our turtles are all like really ancient creatures which is why we really want to make sure that they're not disappearing on our watch. They've been on this planet for a couple of million years. It'd be tragic to lose them. So it's really good to learn more about them. So hopefully we can do something to protect them as well. Let's see what's our next uh, tilefish. Oh, have you heard of a tilefish before? I don't think I have. What's a tilefish? So it says a small spiny fish of tropical and temperate oceans, preferring coral reefs and sandy areas. Oh, so it's like another coral one. Look up a picture. What's let's, a tilefish? Yeah, let's, let's see like? what a tilefish looks like. And they do say this about our coral reefs that they're one of the most biodiverse places on the planet, which means there's just so many different species all living together in one place, which is why it's so important that we need to be keeping our coral reefs as safe as possible. There's uh, some tilefish. Oh, I don't think I've ever seen them before. Hmm. Like all spotty as well. Yeah. Be quite good for camouflage as well, I suppose, using spots and patterns for blending in. Trumpet fish. Oh, I love the sound of that. A trumpet fish. Uh, Please tell me it's got a nose that looks like a trumpet. Well, it says, um, a long, thin fish of the tropical western Atlantic that often dangles or swims vertically to blend in with its surroundings. Oh, interesting. So instead of swimming like that, it like hangs out like that? I think so. That just reminds me of how the sperm whales sleep upside down that we discovered. I'm going to see what one looks like. Yeah, I've Just to see if it does look... Uh, anything like a trumpet or if that's i always think it must be amazing for the scientists when they discover new species because they're still discovering new species every day when they get to name these um, sea creatures. i'm not gonna lie that's not really what i thought it would look like but... <laughs> trumpet fish it looks a little bit like a pipe fish doesn't it, it? Does, it really it, long. you're right though it does have i don't know if you can see in that photo but the eye is actually it's really far back far back it? so, so it does really have quite a long snout snout i don't know if you would call it a snout on a fish no, it looks like it, doesn't it? I don't know what the specific it's term trumpet. is. It's trumpet. It's got a long trumpet. It's got a long trumpet, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've got three more minutes. Uh, grunion. I don't know if I've said that correctly. A grunion or a grunion. grunion. Um, I have not heard of one of those before. Yeah. Well, I'm not surprised, actually, because it says, a small slender fish that spawns on beaches at night in Southern California and Baja, California. Oh, wow. So, so it seems specific to California. But it spawns on beaches yeah does that or mean they obviously come out of the water or i wonder if it's in rock pools i'm not sure let's see if there's any more information on the internet so there is quite a lot of sea creatures that have adapted to be able to live outside of the sea or the water for a certain amount of time so a lot of our rock pool creatures are really well adapted so when the tide disappears they can cope with maybe being exposed to air and to the rising temperature until the tide comes back in yeah. So they, yeah, they, they leave the water at night to spawn on beaches during the spring and summer. Oh, bless you! <laughs> bless Sorry, you. excuse me. <laughs> it's those grunions. Okay. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, uh, did not know grunions came onto the beach to spawn. That's brilliant. Uh, emperor shrimp. I feel like emperor shrimp. kind of talked a little bit about... Our shrimp and our prawns as well. Mm-hmm. But what, is there anything sp- different about our emperor shrimp? Are they quite big? <laughs> bless you. Sorry. <laughs> off screen there um it says they live cooperatively on other sea animals oh so i think this is where it's like a case of i think it's called um 
symbiosis isn't it mm -hmm. so if they've got like a symbiotic relationship basically mm -hmm. it means that the two creatures as you say either live on top of each other or mm -hmm. work with each other and there's benefits for both yeah well that's that <laughs> the reason that i know about that also is from spider-man obviously with uh, with venom i knew you were gonna say that you're like oh symbiote i know what you're talking about <laughs> okay shall we go for oh it's it's picked nautilus again oh let's go for another one then Yellow tang. Oh, tangs are a type of tropical fish, I'm sure. So yep. the yellow ones. I think that one of the fish in Finding Nemo pop, is a yellow pop, tang. Popular in saltwater aquariums. Ah, so a lot of people are having them in home aquariums as well. So I guess for that, and I guess the message in Finding Nemo as well, that we've got to be really careful for anyone who does keep fish at home, that they're coming from really sustainable sources as well. So even if you don't eat fish, if you keep fish, you've got to make sure that they're being sustainably um sourced at the same time as well shall we do one more we've got one more i don't so know if this is actually 26 but we've done roughly well i thought I we think. could maybe end it with maybe our favorite creatures yeah. after this and then okay. hopefully that should be about 26. Oh, well this is interesting i'm not quite sure how you pronounce this one uh ziphosura oh what's a ziphos ziphosura the 400 million year old class of anthropods that include horseshoe crabs, oh. which are related to spiders oh. and ticks. Wow, because I know the horseshoe crab, and they do look, they are absolutely ancient. And they do look like they've literally just come out of like the dawn of time um, kind of thing. So that's obviously the name given to all the family that kind of has come from that. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. So we've covered everything from like our ancient mollusks and zephosaurus. Someone might have to correct us on our pronunciation yeah, of that. Dis disclaimers, we are yeah. not experts. <laughs> <laughs> to our big sharks, to fish that have spawned on a beach. But to finish off, um, what would your favourite sea creature be, do you think? I think I would maybe have to go back to say otter. <gasps> good choice, good choice. And just I think... Seeing them in person was like so amazing. Yeah. And like the way they just, um, you know, held things in their hands and stuff and, they hold, and they also hold hands. they also have thousands and thousands of hairs don't That's they right. yeah. um on on their body and it's uh, there's something to there's some interesting facts about that which i can't remember i think it's to help them keep obviously heat in as well and that's why they have to kind of like clean themselves so often but they do there's like they've got a really really dense fur i think that's what it is and that's what keeps them warm yeah. and waterproof yeah. as well and I think to finish for today, um, I would probably have to finish on the leatherback turtle because a turtle never came up. So I never oh, got yeah. the chance You're right. you to make my hand signal for turtle, which is. Yay! So thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in and hearing us waffle on a little bit about sea creatures and learning a little bit on the way. If you've enjoyed it, it would be amazing if you could donate 26p, £2.60, whatever you can to the Marine Conservation Society as part of the 2.6 challenge. But thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you all again soon. Bye.